go down to Rome. So I, I fully understand that people do have mock draft fatigue and uh, myself def definitely do as well. Uh, but Evan Silva over at Establish the Run, uh, started up his own site formerly of uh, NBC Sports, Roto World. Uh, Evan Silva was one of the OGs uh, of fan uh, fantasy, uh, always respect his work. Uh, and it is good to get different perspectives on things so you don't fall into group think and like, here is what Mel Kaipa says and ESP and all that stuff. So uh, this is what's really fascinating to me because I mean, the draft is a, is definitely a an inexact science, as evidenced by all 32 teams, as well as even the most diehard getting after it analysts in the world whiff big time, man. And it happens. I mean, my, my, myself, I, I was concerned that Justin Jefferson would be wouldn't be able to play outside in the NFL, and uh, maybe that press man would just shut him down. Hmm. 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 Weird man, but uh, Silva fired up uh, his mock trap 1.0. Uh, no trades in this one, uh, but the Vikings definitely end up with some nice, nice here. Uh, Williams, uh, the Bears won. I just want to see a mock draft where Caleb Williams doesn't go one. Or I feel like we're, we're just like a couple days away because I feel like people like to spice things up towards the end. Uh, Kami's a two taken, Drake May, yeesh. Uh, so Oh, also, there's something interesting to hear about Jaden Daniels. So, three Patriots. So, this is what p got people going, man. Uh, Patriots, three LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels. 2023 Heisman winner. Uh, Daniels led the nation both yards per pass attempt, 11.7, and uh, yards per rushing attempt, 8.4. 31 uh, year old fifth team journeyman, blah, blah, blah. Jabroni Brisket would be New England starter if the season began today. Daniels is rumored. To be intent on playing for New England after Daniel's meetings with Washington didn't go as smoothly. So, hmm, a spicy uh, little tidbit of information in there where, I don't know, I feel like Washington, they sort of turned the page from the Daniel Snyder era, but Washington is still going to Washington. And maybe it's a spot where Daniels quietly uh, pulls an Eli or Elway and just goes to uh, Washington is like, hey, do not draft me. I do not want to be here. If you select me, I, I will force a trade. Could be. Could, could be, man. Uh, Cardinals, Harrison Jr., yeah, Shmani Austin Ford gets his guy for Kyler. Uh, Chargers, Joe Walt. So this one's interesting because they definitely want to build around the offensive line if you like listen to Harbaugh for two seconds. He always preaches offensive line. But uh, Rashawn Slater has done an admirable job at left tackle. Now, they could move him to right tackle. They could. Well, I, I would prefer to move him to right tackle than kick him inside. Uh, Alt. I mean, Alt's going to be your left tackle. Like, I, I don't think that uh, Alt would benefit from switching sides, and obviously he can kick inside at six foot eight. So there you go. Uh, Giants, Malik Neighbors. So they pass on J.J. McCarthy, and it's a little bit of a, of a fall here. Now, like we said, there's no trades in this first uh, round mock draft, but and it could be a spot too where you need trades uh, for you know J.J. McCarthy to go top six because of teams coming up, and other teams could go in a different direction since. Some may, may have other needs other than quarterback, and some may not be interested at all. But the Giants, they pass on McCarthy, and he takes a tumble as the Titans go Olufushanu. I didn't know Olufushanu had uh, – Olufushanu's hands are my size, and and he's 6'6", six, six, like, like 330 and change, man. Uh, Falcons uh, taking Dallas Turner. I feel, like, I feel like that's one of the most commonly – uh, mocked picks uh, outside of the uh, number one of Caleb Williams. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Raheem Morris definitely would love uh, love to get himself a talisman on the edge. Uh, Bears uh, taking Roma Dunze. Actually, I take that back. Maybe Roma Dunze at nine to the Bears is the most mocked pick. Uh, Bowers to the Jets. Uh, Vikings uh, taking J.J. McCarthy. Here's what he wrote. I'm skeptical a GM as intelligent as Quesito Fomenza would surrender premium draft capital to move up for a talent of McCarthy's modest caliber. Ooh. Uh, backhanded compliment. I, I do buy a quarterback whisperer, head coach Kevin O'Connell view McCarthy as a system fit uh, should he last to number 11. And uh, yeah, I, I do feel like, you know, we, we've gone over McCarthy 17,000 times with a fine tooth comb. Uh, the tools are there. The upside is there. The, the floor is certainly there. Uh, him operating in a pro style offense, him operating play action, him uh, being a, a, just a dog on third down, th that does all matter. But it is a little bit of a leap of faith. And also, does he have the absolute ceiling of a Williams, a May, a Daniels, or even a Penix? It's debatable. It's debatable. But also, I, I do think that McCarthy has a higher floor. I think that he is a, a safer uh, option. And also, uh, it, it's funny. Like, the comps between McCarthy and Cousins, uh, I mean, might, might be apt. 
might, might be out there. Uh, Broncos at 12 taking Bo Nix. Mm. Uh, so uh, stupid ass Sean Payton gets his gets his uh, gets Drew Brees again. Mm. Raiders taking Penix. So I love the run on quarterbacks here. And and like I said, there's no trades in this one. Uh, so I mean Penix, Nix, uh, and McCarthy definitely could go earlier. I mean Penix. Uh, you know, may sneak into the top 10 because maybe the Raiders wants, want to leapfrog other teams. Same thing with Knicks and, and the, the Broncos. Like, may, beyond just trading into the top five ahead of the Giants, like there might be a run later on as teams try to maneuver. Or well, basically, maybe the Raiders leapfrog the Broncos. Who knows? They'd love to do that as division rivals. Uh, so Raiders get, get Penix. I kind of like that. And also, uh, this is sh- uh, shades of Al Davis because Al Davis – uh, just win, baby. Like he loved the deep ball. Like he loved Daryl LaMonica, the bad bomber. He loved Kenny Stabler. He, he loved Plunkett. Like he loves quarterbacks to just like rip it and rip it, man. And Penix certainly is that. Uh, Saints, uh, Latham. Yes, they need help at tackle. Ram check might be done. Uh, Colts taking BTJ. I kind of like that because everyone and their mom has the Colts uh, mocking cornerbacks, right? And, and we've talked about it. It's good to get different perspectives on things. Also, I think this is the highest that I've seen Graham Barton in a mock draft. Graham Barton's going to be a dude. I love Graham Barton. And, like, in a in an odd world, if the Vikings just sticked and picked and took Graham Barton at 11, I would not be upset in the slightest. I understand. Well, it's a center or a guard. Don't care. Graham Barton, I think, could be the best offensive lineman from this class, and that's saying a lot. Uh, 17 Jaguars, Terry and Arnold. Uh, so they broke the seal on cornerbacks. Uh, Bengals taking Jared Verse. Ooh, spicy. Spicy, I like it. Uh, Rams taking Latu. Latu getting some help on the edge. He stays in La La Land. Uh, the Steelers, Talisa Fuaga. So Fuaga takes a, a little bit of a tumble, but put him on that right side. I love it. I really love it, man. Uh, then also the Dolphins taking uh, Troy Fatanu. So uh, they need some help supplementing on the interior offensive line. They lost Robert Hunt. Connor Williams may be done uh, with that knee injury. Uh, Fatanu uh, is going to be able to kick inside, uh, plus can play tackle in a pinch. So uh, you definitely love that. Uh, the Eagles taking Quinian Mitchell, so cornerback two off of the the board. And, yeah, they definitely need uh, some supplementation at corner. Now, I, I think that Mitchell – could be a press man, but it played a lot of off man in college as well as a lot of zone uh, in Toledo scheme. But Mitch M- Mitchell's a dog. I-, I love him, man. Uh, Vikings at twenty three also take a cornerback, Nate Wiggins, uh, a lanky six foot uh, six foot one, one seventy three corner with elite speed, four two eight. Wiggins allowed just one touchdown pass in, in his coverage across ten games in twenty twenty three. And Wiggins is interesting because. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're scared off about the frame, yes, but speed for days, great agility, even though he didn't test uh, the, the leap and explosion uh, is there as well. So he's absolutely physically gifted. Now, people are going to poo-poo Nate Wiggins like, oh, we can't take Nate Wiggins because Andrew Boot Jr. also went to Clemson. <laughs> Scout, the player, not the helmet. That, that's it. That's it, man. Uh, and Wiggins, long and lengthy. He is a press coverage savant. And with the Vikings and Flores wanting to play more man, this does make sense. Uh, fluid hands, uh, yeah, mature use of hands as well. It does have really, uh, well, I feel like his footwork definitely needs some work. But he does have smooth hips and does have that uh, that uh, catch-up speed. So basically, like Nate Wiggins is like if Trey Wayne's had good hips. Mm. Uh, he does gamble. He does get after things, but also uh, he doesn't necessarily get burned like like Silva said, allowed one touchdown in coverage last year. Uh, tackling needs to improve. And so that that's sort of what sets him apart from uh, Terry Arnold and even Kool-Aid and definitely Quinton Mitchell. Like, eh, he's not about that contact life, but also if he added a little bit of weight, you know, that, that might be, well, who, who knows, man. But it, it might be a blessing uh, given his uh, frame, even though there hasn't been durability issues that he's just like, yeah, whatever. All right, so comp like a shorter Antonio Cromartie, uh, I feel like that could be fine. But Antonio Cromartie was a freak athlete, man. Absolutely. Uh, rest of the first, uh, Jordan Morgan going to the Cowboys. Uh, Patrick's taking Amaris Mim. I, I, I hate that. I hate I, I, I'm not... I'm not wishing for the downfall of Amarius Mims, but uh, I am rooting that he turns out like uh, Tony Mandrich. That's all, man. But also, it, it's why. So we, we got comments like, "You love every single pick in every mock draft." Well, what, what am I gonna do? Like, be like, uh, I, I poo-poo this young man uh, and his uh, future career prospects. I, I poo-poo on it. No, no. Like every guy could work out in a given situation, you know, get, given proper coaching, given proper opportunity, or he could just not work out. What am I supposed to do? Just be like, ah, this guy's going to end up like Isaiah Wilson. Money's going to change him, and he's not going to put in the work, and he's lazy, and he's very poopy. 
Mm. Uh, the Bucks uh, take Kool Aid. They definitely need some help at corner after losing Carlton Davis. Uh, Byron Murphy goes to the Cardinals. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. So the Cardinals end up with uh, Harrison Jr. as well as Byron Murphy uh, shooting the gaps uh, on the Cardinals defense. Adonis Mitchell, AD, ends up in, in Buffalo. I kind of like the speed. I, I kind of like the speed with Josh Allen, and he could be that, that true blue deep threat uh, that is going to be just beautiful. Uh, beautiful with Josh Allen. Uh, Cooper DeJean ends up with the Lions. I, well, it's an interesting fit. Ooh, I'm going to poo-poo a spot. So DeJean, I think, is going to play all over in a defense i think that his versatility is going to be key but the the lions already have one of those guys in brian branch now i'm not poo-pooing it necessarily because dijon can line up at, at corner i don't think that he's going to be like the press man savant which is why you know guys like, like kool-aid wiggins uh quinn mitchell and Taryn arnold went ahead of him so even though he does have that capability of being a stud cornerback specifically what teams are looking for uh, belt buckle to belt buckle press man. I, I don't think DeJon's going to be that guy in the NFL, but I, I think that he is going to be a honey badger type player. I think that he is going to be a Brian Branch type player, but also with, uh, well, honey badger is also a great punt returner too. So maybe that's a ba- bad comparison, but, but all right. So DeJon's just going to be a honey badger. That's all, man. That, that's all. But uh, Coop, it's going to be a good problem to have because I, I would love to have two Brian Branches on my defense. There you go. Tyler Guyton goes to the Ravens. Uh, JPJ goes to the Niners. That's kind of unfair. That That's really unfair. And then Troy Franklin goes to the Chiefs uh, in, in this spot. I feel like Troy Franklin's kind, kind of getting slept on, man. But Wiggins in this spot, so you get yourself a cornerback one. I think that he comes in and starts right away. And then with the Vikings, so – Number one, they don't trade up heaven and earth to go get J.J. McCarthy. But like we said, there's no trades in this mock, so maybe it's a spot where they would have traded up. But getting McCarthy in this spot, having him sit for a year behind Sam Darnold, having him completely absorb things, completely breaking down uh, and refining his technique and his footwork. I think McCarthy, surrounded by all that talent, I think that he could indeed be Brock Purdy plus. And you know, people, people shat on Brock Purdy, but he did help lead a team to the Super Bowl. And the Vikings haven't had that since 77. So we'll, we'll see. But your thoughts are thoughts. Evan Silva's mock draft 1.0. Vikings uh, at land quarterback one as well as cornerback one. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. You guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull production value.